not able to hear. Off to a fantastic start. Hopefully the F1 fantasy season gets off to a smoother start than that. Um, yeah, hopefully you can hear me now. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, thanks for joining everyone who's already in here. Um, yeah, I've completely forgotten what I've just said because I was just talking to myself apparently for the last like minute or two before I realised that it was just me talking and no one could hear me. But yeah, the mic is fixed now. We've now got 13 minutes to go before the game launches. Let's hope, like I said, the game launches smoothly and it doesn't take me like half an hour to actually get into my account or whatever. Like I'm, I should already be signed in, so hopefully we can just go straight in. The game's going to just magically appear. We can look at the teams, we can look at the price reveals, we can look at the rules, we can look at some team selection ideas from the, you know, straight off the get-go. Um, so yeah, let's have a quick look, see who's, who's in the chat. Who have we got? We've got, oh yeah, we've got Michael. Hi Michael, how you doing? Keith, how are you doing? Uh, Gil, I'm going to butcher this name, Gil Gilliam Visser, welcome, what a legend you are. <laughs> oh, Rob from Fancy Hub, nice, been watching been watching your videos, uh, very, very good. Nice to see you join the YouTube fa uh, YouTube fun. Um, sorry, I feel like I should probably move the mic over, because my, my chat box is like over to my right, and every time I look at the chat, I'm kind of away from the mic, so I'll move that over a little bit, maybe that's a bit better. Um, what we got then? Just watch your video from last week. Cool. Yeah, I got I got a few videos out already, like just sort of preemptively, because I didn't know when it was going to launch. And as we, you know, we can see that the game has launched very late. We're going to have like what is it, five days? We got effectively today, so going into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the deadline. It looks like it's going to be on Saturday. So yeah, we have five days. <laughs> the game's not even launched yet. Five days. So it's a bit of a mad rush. But yeah, we're gonna like I say, when the game launches in twelve minutes, we will look at the rules like I say we'll look at the, the team selection and we'll have our first thoughts on what the best teams are so what you what are you guys thinking already because I've got a few ideas obviously based on testing I'm sure most of you've been watching testing or at least keeping up to date with what's going on in testing and lots of feedback from the teams journalists that sort of thing um, the thing that stands out to me is the most obvious things to stand out let's just go for the obvious stuff that Red Bull just look supreme they are just a juggernaut that keeps on going and I think Depending on the price, we've seen a couple of price reveals already. I think Max is 26.9, if I'm not correct, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, so 26.9 seems kind of okay, I guess. You should be able to get him in your team and put the DRS boost on him. I would imagine most people will be doing that. Obviously, Fernando Alonso, if he really is at 8.3 million, like... He's just going to be in everyone's team, isn't he? He's just going to be everyone's... It's just a no-brainer. Aston Martin looked really good. Um... What do you guys think? Do you think that uh, Aston Martin are going to be ahead of Mercedes? Um, maybe we can... Let's do a little poll. Let's do a little poll. Let's see what people think. Um, Aston Martin. I can't actually type Aston Martin. I literally cannot type. Right, let's go for it. Let's see what you guys think. Do you think Do you think Aston Martin are going to be like third in the pecking order? Or are we all getting a bit overexcited and exaggerating how, how strong Aston Martin actually are? I don't know. Um, what are we thinking? I, it's, it's kind of tight. I think Mercedes will still be there. I think Mercedes had a bit of a mixed, mixed testing and they had some ups and downs. Although maybe not so much ups and downs because the bouncing stopped now. Um, so they look like in a lot better position than they were 12 months ago, for sure. Like, 12 months ago, they were down in the dumps, depressed, and it just got worse as the season went on, pretty much. So they, they seem like they're definitely in a better position. We know the Mercedes are reliable. They've had a couple of little hiccups over testing, but, you know, that's what testing's all about, to iron those hiccups out. So I think Mercedes will once again be very reliable. As for fantasy assets, though... Because the DRS boost is now for, you know, any driver, and most people are probably just going to have Max Verstappen because of that, having Max Verstappen in your team really limits what other drivers you can have, and I'm just not sure Mercedes are going to quite fit in anywhere, at least not for the first race or two. I think I want to give them a chance to kind of see what goes on. Um, for me, uh, my initial team, obviously the game is still nine minutes away from launching, so we don't know exactly what's going on with the prices and the structure. And we don't know, we don't have a clue how much the constructors are going to cost. So that's going to be really pivotal on the team structure because the constructors are very important slots and we now have two of them to choose from. My initial thoughts, depending on pricing, is like Red Bull and Aston Martin and Max Verstappen and Alonso. I don't know how, I don't, it depends on the prices though and then just fit in some budgets around that. I think that could be quite good. But yeah, it depends quite a lot on how, how the constructors fit in. Um, so it looks like the majority of people voting so far do not think Aston Martin will leapfrog Mercedes. And yeah, I'm kind of in that camp as well. I do think Aston Martin definitely looks strong, but 
testing can be deceiving sometimes and I don't know but for sure like Fernando Alonso definitely seems like a bit of a, a no-brainer to me um, if he does come in at 8.3 million let's just see it's gonna have a quick look at the chat see what you guys are saying yeah 8.3 million uh, that's what I'm saying if he if Alonso is 8.3 million that's Luke Lucathon uh, I fully agree I, I, I think 8.3 million he should be he should be in 100% of teams he's gonna beat his teammate because Lance Stroll has got like broken arms <laughs> even if he comes back he probably won't be super fit and can you imagine like trying to drive an F1 car after you broke your arm two weeks ago potentially both wrists two weeks ago like those things are handfuls like you need you need to be strong to handle handle the car and you know if you're recovering from broken arms if the rumors are true about Lance Stroll I just don't see him coming back for a, a couple of weeks to be honest that means that Felipe Drogovic will be in the car and Alonso, you know, again, depend on the rules here, um, depend on the rules if there's still teammate points. And Alonso is just like, he's going to get the teammate points, like, unless something dramatic happens. As we all know, I had a bit of a run in with Fernando Alonso last year in my fantasy team. He kept trolling me. And it's not just me. It's all of us, really. Everyone who, who kept going and trusted Fernando Alonso kept getting hurt. But it wasn't Fernando's fault. He didn't mean to hurt us. It was just unlucky, those DNFs, those unreliability of the Alpine. But I think the Aston Martin, last year the Aston Martin was fairly bulletproof with its reliability of that Mercedes engine underneath it. And now it's got these fancy new upgrades and looking looking not just reliable, but also really fast. And we know Fernando Alonso is elite when it comes, well, when it comes to anything to do with driving, but he's super, super good at qualifying. So if he can just stick that Aston Martin really high up the grid, and they have good race pace and good tyre deg degradation. And I think the Aston Martins could be extreme value depending on what they come out. So yeah, 8.3 million just seems kind of stupid. I, I wish I kind of wish they'd be a bit more just so he's not in every single person's team because then it just kind of reduces the var variation amongst teams. And I think having a good variation um, is is a good thing for the game. We've got seven minutes. Seven minutes, guys. Come on. This game's going to launch in seven minutes. Uh, speaking of variation, actually, that's another thing which I'm a bit down about um, is the fact that they've removed streaks because I think the streaks, you know, for qualifying and for rate, getting race streaks, I think they were a really good way of getting variation in the team. So it forces you to make those substitutions because you want to try and get people on streaks. And now we just don't have that incentive. We've got the, the six boosters, which we'll have a look at in a minute when the game launches. Um, but I just don't think the boosters really generate or encourage us as fantasy managers to change our teams that much so it's not going to be a case of set and forget because there's going to be lots of upgrades constantly coming through the season people will go in and out of form it's different tracks will suit different people in different cars there's de there definitely will be substitutions used up and variation amongst our teams but i think at least initially like for the get-go in bahrain i think a lot of our teams are going to look kind of the same and i think going forward it will be a bit less uh, variation because of the lack of streaks which is a bit of a, a bit of a nuisance but we'll see what the rules are in six minutes now um in case you know maybe there's a few up extra little things or incentives to help and change our teams around so let's see what else we've got in the chat here maybe for a couple of races aston looks the best of the rest yeah i agree with that uh da -da -da -da. what are your thoughts on two constructors from from dilip is that your name two constructors i like it again I've just been talking about the variation. Having two constructors does add to that variation. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how it affects the pricing structure because obviously everything's been squished down. We expected Verstappen to be like 35 million or something at the beginning of the season, but he's now going to be just under 27 million because of the price compression, as they described it in the in the article last week. Um, so yeah, I kind of like the two constructors. And as to who I want the constructors, obviously we'll find out in five minutes if um, you know the prices of the constructors and who we can get in there. My initial thoughts are Red Bull, but it depends because I feel like they should be really expensive. But then, you know, Max Verstappen should be really expensive, and Alonso should be really expensive, and they're not that expensive. So we'll see what how how dear the um, constructors are. But yeah, I'd quite like to get Red Bull and Aston Martin in as my constructor if I can afford it. Like I say, I'd like Red Bull, Aston Martin, Alonso, Verstappen, and then just fill in with like likes of De Vries, maybe Sargent if I if I'm really struggling to fit in into the budget. So. I don't know, that completely depends because I don't know what the, the pricing is going to be like exactly. Uh, it's the same budget as this year. We get 100 million, so everyone's price is going to be like a bit lower than last year. Uh, but yeah, we get 100 million. So 100 million to spread around uh, seven slots, five drivers, two constructors. Um, it's gonna, I think the two constructors are definitely good for the game. Again, adds more variation. Some people will go for like two budget budget um, constructors and then just try and pack out with the drivers. I personally prefer getting the beefy constructors because i think that's where the bulk of points are in general but again we're going to see all the new rules in just a minute well four minutes time so we'll see the new rules and we'll see how that might affect you know 
whether we want the constructors, whether we want uh, to pack out the drivers, we'll, we'll have to read read it through with a fine tooth comb, and we'll get some some drafts set up as well. So yeah, we've got four minutes to go. Uh, let's see what else is on here. Uh, da -da -da -da. First time playing. Oh yeah, well welcome welcome to the game, Gil Gilliam. <laughs> Um, it all looks like all new rules, so it's a good time to start start playing because we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, last season and season before, when you know playing were in charge of it, it's going to be changed quite a bit from based on those rules. So, yeah, welcome to the the madhouse. <laughs> do you feel Ferrari will do well this season? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I think they've had pretty decent testing. They've had some troubles with tire degradation, but I think that's being overplayed by the media because. As, as Ferrari have come out and said themselves, they tried lots of different setups, and yeah, some of the tire deck was not great on those setups, but you know, that's what the whole point of testing. I think when it comes to, to qualifying and um, the Bahrain race this, this coming weekend, I think the Ferrari is going to be right up there competing with the Red Bulls. I do think the Red Bulls at the moment definitely still have the edge, but the Ferrari is definitely look good. They looks like they've improved their straight line speed quite a lot, and you know, there's quite a, there's like three or maybe arguably four kind of really long straights in Bahrain. Um, so that could really benefit them. Um, so yeah, it'd be really interesting to see. We've got two minutes. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Is this, is it, I don't know what's actually going to happen. Is this going to refresh by itself? Do I need to refresh? Do I need to log in? What's going to happen? Maybe we'll just be like, Bzzz, you're in the game. That's what I'm kind of hoping because yeah, we'll, we'll find out in two minutes, two minutes. Um, what else we got in the, the chat? The alphas. Alphas as in Alpha Tori, because the way you spelt that is Alpha Tori as opposed to Alpha Romeo. Um, Yogesh. Um, yeah, which, which team do you mean? Do you mean Alfa Tori or do you mean Alfa Romeo? Because Alfa Romeo look good, to be honest. Uh, both Guan Yu Zhou and Bottas both look impressive. Uh, they did have the uh, trouble with the Ferrari power unit and a couple of days ago. Um, I think Bottas stopped on track for a bit and kind of, yeah, a bit worrying. Because, you know, the Ferrari reliability last season wasn't the best. We all know that. Um, so, yeah, having, having a Ferrari engine in the Alfa Romeo is slightly concerning. But I do think they should come in at a fairly decent price. One minute. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah. I think Alfa Romeo will be reasonable. I think Bottas, maybe Joe, jo, depending on the prices, could be definitely on, on the radar. Um, and then who else have we got? Um, Alfa Tori. Yeah, Alfa Tori haven't been particularly exciting, to be honest. They look kind of okay. I like I like the look of De Vries. I think he'll do well, but it might take him a few races to settle in. Um, I think he's priced at $5 million from the reveal uh, from the F1 Twitter. So $5 million, I, if I if I need a budget like that that is that cheap then I think De Vries definitely could be it. But yeah, we've probably got just a few seconds left until this game apparently launches. This is very exciting. Are we ready? I, I don't actually have like a countdown, but I think there's probably about 20 30 seconds left. So are we ready for this? Best budget driver this time, except Alonso. Uh, what you mean, De Vries? Maybe. I'm not sure. Is that an open question? I don't know. Until we see the actual prices, I don't know exactly who the best budget driver is. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, Albon. Yeah, I'm curious to see Albon's price as well. I think Albon could be really good because the Williams have definitely improved. Oh my god, it's zero minutes. What's happening? Do I refresh? Do I refresh? <laughs> is the game launched? Um, refresh? Anyone got it? Anyone got it? <laughs> is anyone in the game? I don't know. Let's... uh, Two seconds. I've got the old spreadsheet up just in case. Right, I'm gonna refresh this. It's not. It's not. It's not launching. Is anyone else in the game? <laughs> I'm just trying to refresh it. Uh, does it make me want to sign in? Oh, I think it's. I think we're in. Let me just. Is this in? I don't know what's going on. Let's get us back on here. Here we go. Is this in? Are we in? The official F1 fancy game. Uh... <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what's going on. It's all a bit blank. How to play? Oh, I need to log in. It wants me to log in. Fantastic. <laughs> right. I'll just take this off screen for two seconds. I'm just going to log in. Why is it? I am logged in. Why is it not actually do anything? I told you there'd be hiccups. 
Pick your team. Okay. Well, let's just scroll down and see what it is. All right. Okay. Let's just read through. Let's read through. Let's see what's going on. Uh, free to play. Fantastic. Uh, create up to three teams. So that's the same as last year. Yep. Five five drivers, two constructors. Give your team a name. Blah, blah, blah. DRS boost. Yeah, we know about that. Pick one driver. It's going to be Max Verstappen probably. Chips. Da, 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 da. Each chip. Yeah, we know about that. Transfers. Da, da, da. Leagues. Yeah, we know about that. Yeah, so how do we actually... Game rules? Here we go. Let's have a look at some game rules. I don't know where the actual team selection is going to be, but maybe someone in the chat can help me out whilst I have a look through this. Um, here we go. Uh, why is there such a delay? My stream, I just realised there's like a massive 20, 30 second delay on the stream by the looks of it. That's a bit annoying. Um, right, so, constructors. Add a second constructor to your lineup this season. We know about that. Chips. Da -da -da. Overtakes. Win points for every overtake that your driver makes. Oh. So there's no limit to that now? That's interesting if there's no limit. Because before there was, you know, up to five places and you can gain up to ten points. That's very interesting. That kind of helps the guys at the back a lot more. It makes the budget picks a bit more interesting. Um, two free transfers, we know that. Pit stops, box box. There's nothing like the spectacle of a perfect pit stop. And now the fastest teams will score points for your fantasy team if they top the timing charts. Interesting, because we know another sort of bonus to having Red Bull as your constructor then in that case, isn't it? You know, Red Bull are super fast at their pit stops in general. Um, so that's just like an easy, easy few points. So let's just check the... I mean, go to the main page, hit game, and then go through again. Okay, I'll do that in just just a second. I'm just reading for the rules. So scoring um, will be a point. Da -da -da. Yep. Yep. So drivers qualifying. So that's the same as last year. Same as last year. Oh, disqualify. You get 15 points lost if you get disqualified from that. Interesting. Drivers. Constructors will score will score the combined total of their two drivers in qualifying. As listed above, yep. Yeah. Constructors will also score points for achieving one of the following. If neither of them reach Q2, oh, they lose a point, so that's not great for the budget, guys. If one driver reaches Q2, you get one point. If both drivers reach both... Oh, wow, yeah, look, look at that. Ten points for both drivers to Q3. That's another huge bonus, and it encourages us to get the likes of Red Bull or Ferrari in our, in our constructor slots, because that's a huge... You know, if you sat there with a William, then you get minus one, and um, you, you're... Rival in the league, uh, in your mini league, has got 10 points from Red Bull, then you're kind of laughing. But uh, sprint race, um, let's just sprint race. So, driver's position gained, yep, it's the same. Overtakes made. So, overtake, so is that so if you overtake and then you get overtaken again, but then you overtake again, does that mean you get more? You get like two points for that? I don't know, that needs to be a bit better explained. Sprint result, kind of the same there. DNF minus 20. Oh, so the DNFs are, are painful this year. Last year it was minus 10, and now it's painful. Um, drivers, race positions gained. Yep, yeah, overtakes. So it looks like you get points for overtakes and positions gained. They're very interesting here. Um, fastest lap gets you 10 points. Wow, that's double what it was last year. Driver of the day as well. Oh, okay, everyone needs to get voting for people in my team. <laughs> when we vote for driver of the day, vote for people in your fancy team, clearly, because you're going to get 10 points for it. Um, then you get a bunch of points for that. DNF is minus 20. Yeah, it's hard hitting, hard hitting. Fastest pit stop is 10 points. Oh my god, second fastest five. Wow, this is really interesting. Uh, minus four per additional transfer. Creating a team after the team lock deadline. You lose 10 points and you could just change your whole team. Uh, that seems kind of insane. Okay, um, so if I refresh this, is this gonna actually get me? How do we get in to pick your team? Here we go. Oh boy, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's have a look at then all the prices. We've got all the prices. Uh, let's go through them, let's go through them. I'll keep. I'll get back up to date with the, the chat in a minute. You know, Max Verstappen as expected. He's already 59% owned, what the hell? <laughs> you guys are so quick. Uh, 26.9 million, yep, 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 we know that. George Russell, Perez at 18 million. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Perez at 18 million. Signs Norris. Quite a gap there between signs and the best of the rest there. Norris, Ocon. Yeah, Alonso confirmed at 8.3 million. 79%. <laughs> I expect that percentage to continue to rise. However, that you know, if he does do badly in Bahrain for whatever reason, then his price is going to go... Because he's going to be so highly owned and everyone's going to be like, Oh no, Fernando Alonso had a DNF. And everyone's going to sell him and we're going to lose loads of team value because of the way the new pricing is working. But yeah, that's the 8.1. Bottas, 7.8. Interesting. Stroll, 7.5. Yeah, Albon, Albon 5.5? Get in the team. Get him in the team. 
Nick DeVries, Guan Yu Zhou at 4.9. Yeah, well, there's lots of really cheap options, so that could help us bulk out what's going on. Let's have a quick look at the, the chat, and then we'll get some uh, some teams put together, I guess. Let's see what's going on. DeVries more expensive than Yuki. Yeah, as a rookie. I mean, Yuki had a horrible season last season, so I'm not surprised Yuki. Well, how much does he cost? Oh, he is. Let's make this a bit bigger. Yuki is 4.8, yeah. Logan Sargent at four million. Okay, yeah, I like I like this. Let's just let's shove a team in there straight away. Let's get Mac. Let's get all the all the guys that I said whilst we we're waiting for the stream. We'll add the constructor, Red Bull. Oh, okay, constructors. Here we go. Okay, so Red Bull are almost identical price to just Verstappen. Well, can we get can we get him in there as well? Um, Aston Martin a six million. Aston Martin a six point seven million. What have they done to this game? Everyone get Aston Martin in there now. Get him in. How much money have I got? I got. Wait, I've got 25 million left and I've got a team like this already. This game's broken. I've broken the game. Right. Um, back to drivers, I guess. Uh, wait, I've got 25 million. That can't be right. I've already got 25 million left. This is insane. Okay. Who can I get with 25 million? Can I squeeze in Perez as well? And then 7.4 million. I could get Piastri. Not, inter not interested in McLaren that much. Nick DeVries, possibly. Who else is down here that might be worth a, worth a punt? How much have I got? 7.4. I mean, I don't really want Piastri, but he does fit in there. Magnussen could be, you know, could be a good option. That like, has looked okay. I'll place him around the maybe 7th or 8th position. So to have him as your budget, I mean, that, 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 there you go. Team done. Don't need to do any more videos. Team's done. Got Verstappen. Got Perez. Got Red Bull. Got Alonso. Got Aston Martin. Got the best budget driver. Got K-Mag. Team's done. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Who are you? Who are you? What we got in the chat? You can't double up on premium constructors. Once you choose Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, the other two are blocked off. Wow, well, that didn't appear in the rules. Uh, let me have, let me have a look at this. I mean, so if I go back to constructors, yeah, they're grey. Wait, why is everyone greyed out? Oh wait, is it just because they're greyed out because I can't afford them? Is that why? If I, for example, get rid of Max for a minute, yeah, no, I can get them in. Yeah, look, I can get Mercedes and Red Bull if I want. What are you talking about, Rob? What are you talking about? <laughs> um. Da, 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 da. All right, Charlie, who you got? Verstappen, Sainz, Alonso, Stroll, Albon, Red Bull, Aston Martin. Yeah, these teams look legit. These teams look legit. Like, oh, this is exciting. I think there will be some good variation, you know. Like, can we get, if I can get rid of Perez for a minute, let's get Verstappen in here. Oh, I've got, like, literally no money left. I can't quite get the, oh, it's annoying that I keep scrolling down. Three million. I can't quite do that, but if we got rid of Mercedes, how much are Ferrari? They, wait, they're cheaper. Ferrari are cheaper and clearly better. Oh my goodness, the pricing uh, is a bit, bit, oh, bit off in my opinion. But yeah, sure. I uh, got Albon in there. Wait, why is Sergeant there? We've got ten million to play with here if I do this. Ten million. The cheapest is four, so I can't really do much other than like that. And that's a team as well. You know, just go crazy for the constructors. You get Verstappen on the DRS boost. Alonso because he's Fernando Alonso and he's a boss. Albon, great budget, and then you know Alfa Romeo looks strong, Guan Yu Zhou looks good, Nick De Vries might hit the ground running, Alfa Tori not particularly exciting, but you know who else are you going to pick down there? Hulkenberg potentially, if if you think Haas is better than Alfa Tori, but do we trust Hulkenberg? Hmm, not sure. Um, okay, so now Rob's saying that. Wait, wait, what's going on? What's going on? Wait, what? Okay, you're just stupid. Cool. Okay. <laughs> you're really confusing me. But yeah, this is this is exciting to dabble around. So, wow. Wow. This, I'm surprised that the constructors are quite so cheap. Like, Ferrari are 22.1 and Charles Leclerc just by himself is 21.2. The, the constructors are really cheap. They're really cheap. And you get those points for the pit stops. You get points for getting your, driver, your drivers into Q3. Um... You know, we saw, I looked at the rules, you get 10, is it 10 points just for getting into Q3? So double up on these constructors when they're so cheap relative to the drivers. It just seems crazy to me. Like initially I was thinking like we go Aston Martin and we and I might still consider Aston Martin a bargain bargain price of 6.7 million. Like super bargain price given how they've done in testing. And that does free up some funds to maybe look at, that gives me like 20 million Again, probably getting the likes, just go all in on Red Bull, or you could maybe go to Carlos Sainz if you give him, trust him a little bit, and that lets you bump up maybe Guan Yu Zhou to someone like Gasly or Bottas. I think out of Alpine, 
and Alfa Romeo, I think Alpine are going to be better than what people are giving them credit for. And they've also got an upgrade coming to Bahrain. So I think Gasly could actually be quite a reasonable shout at 8.1 million. But this team I've got here actually allows me to get, um, yeah, Bottas or, or Gasly if I wanted. Um, yeah, I can afford just about a four Gasly. So I could, I could if I wanted, go go Pierre Gasly, um, depending on what happens in the practice sessions. But yeah, a team like this looks look really good. What are we thinking straight away then? What are we thinking? I think I think uh, looking at the let's go back to the the game rules again. Let's have another look at the constructors because from what I after reading through quickly, I think the constructors seem to have like really big bonuses, like really big bonuses. So let's have a proper read through and then we can determine do we want to weigh our teams more to the constructors or do we want to go heavy constructor and budget constructor? Because if we if if we want to go heavy constructor and budget constructor, then Red Bull Aston Martin look like great choices. But Ferrari are coming in at like just 22 million. That just seems so cheap. So I'm kind of tempted also to do like just go all in um, Red Bull Ferrari and then have some cheaper drivers. And I can still afford max of this. Like I feel like a lot of our teams for Bahrain are all going to look pretty similar for my, is my first thoughts. Um, let's have a quick look in the chat as well. Hang on a second. Um, <laughs> I've just stole, stole your, your team lineup. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the teams are going to be teams are going to be kind of... Uh, similar at the moment teams better than driver yeah so let's have a look at that let's have a look at that so drivers get their points as, as we expected um the, the the dnfs are heavy so there is a chip that allows you to to negate the minus the minus points i need to have we need to have a look at the chips actually in a minute to see if that's retrospective because surely you would only apply that after a race when your team have got like minus 20 points for like three different drivers because there's been a big crash like think of silverstone last year um, there's that big pile up basically in, in turn one. That's the sort of race where you'd use the chip to to activate that and stop yourself from getting hit by the, those points because that's, that's quite a lot of negative point scoring in here. But anyway, let's get back to business and look at the drivers versus constructors. So drivers, so constructors will score a combined total of their two drivers in qualifying. So the drivers get those points and the constructors get their points. So straight away, the constructors are clearly better than the drivers. Uh, constructors will also score points for achieving this um okay is there any where, oh this is qualifying okay so you get like so say max Verstappen gets 10 points for getting pole then the constructor at red bull will also get 10 points and the constructor will get another 10 points as long as perez also gets in the top 10 alongside max so straight away i'm thinking the constructors are going to be crucial and we're going to have to pack out with the beefy constructors let's carry on reading though in case that changes uh sprint race positions gained one point per position and you lose a point per position yep overtakes made why is this still a little asterisk is that down the bottom is there okay this will explain it overtakes are considered valid when only when one driver legally passes another on track and the driver pass was not entering or in the pit lane or suffering a car failure or going unreasonably slow just a bit vague so i guess that means cars can overtake be overtaken overtake again be overtaken overtake so if you've got that back and forth are you just going to get rack up loads of points like that seems kind of a bit dodgy to me but yeah okay um where were we we've won sprint races where are we qualifying there we go um sprint race so yeah again the sprint races are going to be the most uh obvious position obvious time to use the extra drs boost which was last season's mega driver because you get extra points um dnf not classified uh, what's going on in the chat with two constructors, you can now diversify your team more. Um, yeah, but as, I, as I'm reading through the rules, everything seems quite like leaning quite towards the constructors being really powerful. And, and if anyone can correct me in the, in the chat, if anyone's read something which suggests otherwise, but it looks like the, the constructors are really, like the points are quite heavily leaning towards the constructors from what I can see. Again, constructors will score the combined total of their drivers in the sprint. So as long as you, you know, get just a couple of reliable constructors, I think that's the way to go. Positions gained in the race. Yeah, positions per overtake. New. Yeah, thanks for putting the flag there. Fastest lap is 10 points. So again, Max Verstappen is like, you know, <laughs> it seems like a no-brainer to have Max Verstappen and put the DRS boost on him because he's probably going to get driver of the day quite a lot. He's going to get fastest lap a lot. Um, he won't get these points for positions gained because he's going to be on, on the top like front row anyway most races but it looks like yeah max verstappen with two premium constructors look like the way to go uh constructors will score a 
Yep, so get them. They're going to double up. So if Perez and Verstappen are like first and second, then you'll get all those points. Uh, constructors will also score points for the following pit stops. Yep, so everything is pointing towards constructors being being like really premium here. Let's go back up and go back to the home and go back to picking the team. Right then, yeah, let's go back to the chat quickly. I guess it's because there's five drivers, so maybe they're trying to balance by making the teams worth more. Yeah, but I don't know. It just seems like the constructors are just super overpowered one beefy one mid table constructor to help balance yeah i do like balanced team in terms of fantasy my fantasy approach i like a nice balanced team however having re just read through those rules it seems very weighted towards the constructors um i at this price 27.2 million it is absolutely like no question red bull are going to be in my team um I think they're going to be like they're only forty five percent picked on them, but I think they're they're going to be like they should be a hundred percent. That's that's what I'm going to say on it. They should be a hundred percent. And then the next the next lot again, you're going to get those beefy points from the Ferraris as long as they can maintain their reliability. I quite like just going straight. I know it's a bit boring just picking the the two like most expensive constructors or whatever. I know Mercedes are randomly more expensive than Ferrari. Like what? Why did they release the game? after testing like they waited until after testing so they could evaluate who looks good who looks bad why have they made mercedes like three million more than ferrari when ferrari were clearly better than them in testing it just doesn't make any sense to me um there's mini rant over oh dear um what do you think mercedes or ferrari yeah and i've just just been touching on that like ferrari clearly like if i'm gonna go premium this is this is what i'm gonna start with and that leaves me with I still half my budget to get five drivers. Um, so again, yeah, Max Verstappen just seems like pretty obvious. Um, and then that was 23 million. So I guess we've got like four kind of budgety people. Um, Alonso, like that, that this is it. And then you fill in with three budgets. Like this team could be could be the one. So with three budgets at that price, can I squeeze in that Bottas? No, it's, it's not gonna be enough. Bottas, you're too dear. Stroll's going to be too dear. I think it's going to be like boom, boom. I think that might be it. Magnussen. I've got three million to spend. Like, oh, it's because I haven't got a fit. I haven't got my other driver. I was like, oh, this is easy. But um, yeah, I need another driver. Um, so I've got five million for the last drivers. So yeah, I think one usually probably. Nick DeVries maybe. And that uses up nearly every penny of the budget as well. I like that team. What do you guys think of this team? You like it? Uh, da -da -da. No benefit to picking the number one driver. Oh, that's a good point. That is a very good point, Matt Harmon. Um, there doesn't appear to be any points for beating your teammate. Oh, my goodness. this That's a bit sucky, isn't it? I'm going to go have a look at that. I'm just going to do a quick autofill. What do they suggest? Nah. <laughs> what is this? No, 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 no. This is all wrong. Just keep clicking until something happens, until something good happens. No. Nope. No, no. Why don't you put Red Bull in? Put Red Bull in. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't don't auto fill. It doesn't work. Um, right. Uh, game rules. Maybe it'll be. Well, that is it, though, isn't it? This is we've read through all the game rules, right? And there's nothing about beating teammates. That is absolute rubbish. <laughs> why have they? Why have they taken that away? Yeah, it's not in there, is it? That is it. They've really stripped it down. They've added a couple of things in, but all the things that they've added in are just helping the constructors. So, yeah, like, that's that's a bit rubbish, I think. A bit rubbish. FAQs. Is it free? How do I play? Do I need to register? Da -da. That's all rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Scores. When will I see my score? Your score teams will update throughout the weekend, shortly after qualifying, sprint and Grand Prix. Your final score will be calculated as soon as all the data has come back. Uh... Might be a few hours, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, so that kind of looks like Let's have a look at the leagues, because I'm going to set up a league. Um, if people want to join join my league at some point, I will set up a league. I'll probably do it off stream, though, because I don't want to be faffing around for five, ten minutes whilst you guys are just staring at me faffing around for five, ten minutes. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. But yeah, well, I'll definitely set up a couple of leagues if people want to join. Um, but yeah, there's, yeah, that's, that's a bit. No teammate points. No teammate points. Ah, oh, that's just rubbish. I feel a bit down about that. <laughs> uh, what else we got in the chat? Um, da -da -da. I have Hulk instead of De Vries. Potentially, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you could argue that that could be a good move because 
um, Alpha Tori just don't look exciting and hands look kind of all right. They had quite a clean, uh, clean three days of testing. Uh, let's go back to the pick and the team. Look at the deadline already, counting down five days, one hour, like bloody hell. Um, yeah, let's go back to the team that I'm, you know, immediately drawn towards. Um, probably want Perez. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, what have I done here? I've just completely, I don't know why I've got Perez in there. I'm just so used to last season just putting Perez in. <laughs> um, so Albon, and then, yeah, I think this is a great, a great structure, a great shell. And then you just pick the best of the rest, basically. Um, so we got Guan Yu Zhou. Possibly, yeah, I think Guan Yu Zhou 4.9 could be a super bargain. And if he doesn't do well, his price is unlikely to drop. You know, you're not going to lose much value in Guan Yu Zhou. And I think Alfa Romeo look really strong. And you're not going to get points for beating your teammates. So it doesn't make any sense in getting Bottas over Guan Yu Zhou. Because they're going to be... They were, they were fairly even last year. I think Bottas probably edges Guan Yu Zhou slightly. But I think overall, if you're not going to get teammate points, then there's absolutely no harm in getting Guan Yu Zhou in there. And the 5.1... Yeah, leaves you with even Nick DeVries, Sonoda. I'm definitely not picking Sonoda, just bad vibes from last year. Hulkenberg, yeah, I, I like that shout. Was that Michael that shouted that? Yeah, I think that's it might be a good shout, actually, get Hulkenberg, Hulkenberg in there. Again, no pe not getting penalised for losing that to your teammate or anything. So, yeah, that could be a good team. 0 0.8 million. Um, so, if I so, say that's going to be my team, if I click continue, what happens next? Select a driver, obviously Max Verstappen. Confirm that. Team name. Oh, the big boys are back. Yeah, the big boys. Save it. Complete your profile. What is this? Where am I from? United Kingdom. Favorite team. Who's my favorite team? Like I'm one of those those fans that's just like kind of likes everyone. <laughs> um, who should we who should we root for? Should we go for Aston Martin? We'll we'll back Fernando. We'll back Fernando. Yeah, where's Fernando? Get in there, boy. Fernando Alonso in there. Don't miss out. I want Aston Martin. Da -da -da. No, I don't want that. Don't want that. There we go, your team was created, excellent. Your team was automatically joined into the Global United Kingdom Aston Martin League, fair enough. The Fernando Alonso League, yeah, I love it, absolutely love it. Only your first team will be eligible, yep, that's fine. Let's have a look at the league exam, shall we? There's already 6,000 teams, 6,000 people have already logged in, cool. You have another turbo, Tom. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you have another turbo, Tom. I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Michael. Um, thoughts on De Vries versus Hulkenberg? Yeah, I mean, at first I was thinking De Vries, and I still might go with De Vries because I'm not sure I'm fully sold on Hulkenberg. But I think has if rather than having De Vries versus Hulkenberg, I'm thinking in terms of has versus AlphaTauri, and I think has slightly have the edge over AlphaTauri at the moment. Um, so yeah, I probably I think Hulkenberg's a good shout. I only picked one, but have I? What else am I supposed to pick? <laughs> Apply chips. Ah, this is the uh, the turbo stuff. Autopilot, no negative. Da -da -da. Don't know. Let's go into the managed team again. Um, right. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean. You only picked one. I mean, I, there is only one one turbo, isn't there? One DRS boost. Am I going crazy? You have another turbo. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Can you turbo Red Bull? Can I turbo Red Bull, please? Just easy win. Easy number one on the global league. Um, well, so how do you create the league? Well, I guess that would be... Well, I think you have to go... Yeah, I don't know, actually, because I clicked into the league um, after changing my team about. So if I change my team about and maybe try and save it again. Continue is greyed out. That's fantastic. Let's go back. Create a new team. So I can create a team there. Yeah, well, how do you create a league? I was on it a minute ago. Oh, leagues. <laughs> there we go. Create a league. Join a league. Fernando Alonso, only 723. Guys, we need to support Fernando Alonso this year. Come on. Um, yeah, I will, I will create a league. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm not going to do it right now, but I will. Oh, should I do it right now? Yeah, let's just do it right now. Let's just do it right now. Let's just join. Let's do it and get you guys in here. Um, no, I don't want to. I clicked on the wrong button straight away. Right, create a league. <laughs> oh, what are we doing? We're going to create a league. Choose a type of league. Classic private. I can join with an invite. Head-to-head, -head, private, public. Or public. Yeah, I want to get you guys in here. Um, pop her man. Seems sensible. Pop that man, F1. <laughs> Maximum teams, number of teams per user. Now I only have one team. I only have one team. You only have one team in here. Choose wisely. Um, no maximum. Um, yeah. How do I select? How do I select? I want this team. How do I select it? 
Oh, there's a tiny, tiny little red box there, which is really, really not obvious at all. But there we go. Create the league. There we go. There's the code if people want to join. Um, league code. Oh, I can just link this into the, the chat, right? Let's shove this in here. Da -da -da -da. There you go. Hopefully that link works. You can come join the league if you want. Share. I'll oh, share on Twitter later. Cool. Um, where are we? Yeah, so if people want to join the league, that's just... I don't know. Is there, is there no variation on the leagues that we can create? Can we not... Is that literally all we've got? Because, you know, we can have like one one race leagues or two or three race leagues have little mini leagues. Can we not do that? I don't think we can. Because on the la last season, you could adjust it. So you could have, for example, what we got? We've got Bahrain, Jeddah, Melbourne, the first three races. I could do a league where it's just the first three races. That'd be quite interesting. But I'm not sure if that allows you to do it. Can anyone see a way of doing it? Um, let's try another one. Let's try doing another league. So, got Palmer F1 mini <laughs> unlimited participants one. I don't think there's any way to do it. That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? And just go straight away create league. So, okay. Well, I've got a league. There's a league. <laughs> if people want to join, come come join with the same team that I've got. <laughs> this will be a fun league. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, that's um. That's it. I guess we can have a look at some other team builds because at the moment this is like definitely what I'm interested in. Um, but I, I am I'm going to dabble around with um, picking picking Aston Martin as my super cheap budget option because then I can get rid of the likes of Hulkenberg. Um, that gives me 20, 20 million. Probably just go all in and Red Bull in that case. Get Sergio Perez. Then we can also oh, we get up to seven point six. Where are we? Can't quite afford Valtteri Bottas. Man, if I had another point two in the bank, why? I mean, maybe, maybe we don't need. Oh, maybe, maybe we don't need Albon. Maybe we go to Bottas instead. Because five point three, and then just go all in on Alfa Romeo. Just go have three teams. Just go all in Aston Martin, Red Bull, Alfa Romeo. And that could also be a good build, you know. Could be a good build. I'm not. Sh I'm not really sold on Aston Martin as that second constructor though given we've just looked through the rules and everything seems kind of weighted towards the the, the constructors and given that the constructors are underpriced in my opinion um i think we don't need to go down to someone like aston martin as our second constructor because it's not you know particularly a stroll out injured potentially and Drogovic coming in to replace him. I'm not convinced Drogovic is going to be able to get into the top 10 and get me those easy 10 points for the constructors. If I was to go with Ferrari's constructor, though, I think it would be a lot easier to um, to get those points. I think I think it's just, yeah, as much as I want Aston Martin in there, because they're so, so cheap. So cheap. In fact, actually, no, 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 it doesn't make any sense, actually. What if I got rid of Alonso and just had Aston Martin as my constructor and use, Aston Martin, use Alonso... Um, as covering the Aston Martin and not have him in my team is that is that a thing and what does that enable me to do um, again we'll see if we can get all these guys in what can we do with this who else can we get if I go back Alonso oh yeah you can get Alonso in there anyway can't you that's kind of the team I was just on like two seconds ago wasn't it <laughs> well that's kind of where we're at I guess um, but yeah I think this is definitely an option I think some people will go down this route something like this but I think Personally, I'll probably go back to to a team that looks more like this. It doesn't mean I have Hulkenberg. It doesn't look great with Hulkenberg, but the double constructor looks pretty cool. Let's have a look at the chat, see what everyone's doing. Uh, you need to create a new league each week for one league races. Um, yeah, I guess I could do that. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Good shout, Glenn. Um, yeah, it doesn't give you the option to do one league races, but we could do one league races, or I could do like a two or a three... Uh, race league and just keep a tally on my spreadsheet or something that could also work uh although if i'm gonna have like 200 people in my in my league i'm not i'm not putting out my spreadsheet so maybe not but um yeah uh but yeah we could do potentially like a one one league race something like that um and that enables you to put on whatever team you want to i guess because you can just like use your team two or three and optimize one one race um rather than faff about with your team one that you don't want to you know, mess up your global rankings and just try something a bit different with uh, the one the one hit race, uh, the one hit league. Sorry, what's the team code? Did you not get the? Oh, do I not got the? Do I not put the link in? How do I? How do I? 
How do I find the league that I've created? There. 13 people in there already. Cool. How do I actually get the code for it, though? God's sake. <laughs> this is so hard. I can see the league, but I cannot actually do anything with it. I had I had the, the code earlier as well. There is a link. There is a link. The link is working, apparently. There is a link in the chat. If you want to join, just go for that. Um, in the meantime, I'm not, I'm not going to faff about on... Um, on the stream because people don't want to see that to be honest but uh yeah i will find the code and i'll put that on twitter or on the uh on the youtube and that and that sort of thing um but yeah this is this is kind of where i'm at already right straight off the bat this is my first team draft i guess and i think this is something i'm quite happy with at the moment um but i'll definitely be tweaking it we've got five days so i'll definitely be tweaking this and that but going all in on red Bull like is also appealing um let's go back in there because i want to see what, what was the red Bull option if i Get rid of you. Get rid of you. Sorry, I'm just just fiddling around. Constructor 9.4. Yeah, that just kind of gets the Aston Martin in there. Gets, kind of go all in a Red Bull. I do like that team as well. That looks pretty solid. It's just, I think I would, if the, if the points weren't so heavily weighted to the Constructor, I think a team like this is possibly better. But because, the, because it's so weighted to, to the Constructor, um, I think having Ferrari as that second Constructor at just a mere 22 million, it just seems like... Yeah, just seems great. Just seems great. Um, no Ferrari. What are you talking about? No Ferrari. Glucky twenty two. <laughs> no Ferrari. Oh, I've got Ferrari right there. Uh, what drive? What drives the prices? Just the result of the drivers, or what people buy and sell? And I believe it's just a result of the drivers. Um, I don't know if it's game rules. Um, just I don't know if it says anything about the prices here. In the article from last week, it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't say anything in here about prices. In the article last week, it said that the prices would change at the beginning of the new race week. So after the race, I assume on like on a Monday after the race, which take which would take place on a Sunday, on the Monday all the prices will be adjusted in one hit. Um, so I would assume that uh, it's based on performance in the race that's just gone, as opposed to who's buying and selling. There's no more sentiment bar. There's no more people ticking over. You don't have to constantly check uh, through the week and through the race week. Um, you know, whether, t whether drivers are going to tick over or whether you're going to lose value. It's all going to happen in one big hit after each race, um, which means probably the price change. The price changes will be quite dramatic. There'll be quite big jumps, quite big drops. Um, so we might have to be quite on the ball straight after the race before those price changes. You know, if you, for example, if we've all got Fernando Alonso and DNFs, like, do we want to just jump off him straight away because to save value? That's that's a possibility. You could jump off him and then jump back on him um, on his new price, like sub him out, bank the bank the money, and then when his price drops by like two million or something crazy because he's DNF'd, which hopefully won't happen, but you know, just an example, then you can jump back on Alonso and build your team budget um could that could work um uh, yeah so it's definitely interesting um yeah i think that is pretty much it for my first thoughts then if anyone's got any questions i will be happy to answer and obviously i'll be doing a couple of videos during the week and i'll be doing another live stream as well going into the deadline on saturday does it actually say when the deadline is five days one hour so what's the time now Ugh. five days one hour, 26 minutes. Yeah, so it is, that is literally qualifying because it's three o'clock Saturday, I believe qualifying is. So once again, the deadline goes right up to the qualifying time. Um, so I will be doing a live stream for that if people want to join in the fun. I have a feeling my team's going to look very much like this, but I will be, you know, tweaking it and fiddling about. And I need to update my spreadsheet as well with all the new rules changes and stuff. There's, you know, the fact that there's no teammate points is a real bummer because that's quite a good comparison to how, how we did last year. Um, so, yeah, I think overall the changes and, the, you know, the new um, setup of the, the web page and everything looks quite nice. I'm not super excited by the changes. The, the fact that there's no teammate beat points, there's no streaks, and the fact that the points are heavily weighted from what I can see initially to the constructor... Uh, it's going to reduce variance quite a lot because because the constructors are so important. I think a lot of people are just going to be piling in on the likes of Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes. I do think Aston Martin is definitely still an option because they look strong. If they look strong again through the practice sessions, I might reconsider and have Aston Martin as my second constructor. But my initial thoughts are a team like this is probably kind of where my head's at. 
Um, but yeah, uh, overall, I think, yeah, kind of, kind of happy in some ways and kind of unhappy with the changes, but we'll just, you know, this is what it is. This is the game we got to play. So this is what we'll be doing. Um, yeah, let's just have a quick look at the chat again, see what's going on. Aston might be a good shot on this, but no, I think, yeah. Yeah, again, like Aston Martin with, with no, with no Lance Stroll in there is a bit of a, a bit of a bummer, isn't it? Can you change the team completely before the first race without, the, yeah. Uh, Chris Tindenovos, I, I, should, I shouldn't even try and pronounce this name. I'm so bad at pronouncing names, but uh, Chris, yeah. You can change your team as much as you want up until the deadline, which will be three o'clock uh, on Saturday. That's yeah, UK time, obviously. I don't know where about you might be, but basically it's like the minute before qualifying starts is your deadline, and you can change your team as much as you want up to that point. So, yeah, all good. Um, Ferrari, the, the DNF, yeah, yeah, Dominic, I fully agree. DNF big minus point so who if, if bearing in mind that the dnf as dominic just pointed out are so hard hitting with a team like this are we going to get hit hard by the dnfs last season guan yu zhou had quite a few dnfs there's a few reliability issues he obviously had that big crash in silverstone uh, he got taken out by latifi uh where was that marina bay i think maybe um so yeah guan yu zhou had a few dnfs so that could be painful if he doesn't like get a bit more consistency this year hulkenberg we know can be a little bit of a risky driver alongside his teammate K Mag as well. Um, might be interesting to see them on track together. What will be interesting for sure. Um, so they're slightly risks. I think Albon is a pretty safe driver. Alonso, a big joker here at the top of the pile here. Um, DNF wise, I think he should be fine, but because um, he's in a much more what I, what I anticipate to be a much more reliable car this season. Um, so yeah, I'm not worried about Verstappen. He's got a really good DNF rate. Ferraris is the second constructor. As long as they've ironed out their reliability issues, then I'm quite happy to have them. So yeah, overall, I'm not. I think this team is fairly safe. You're, not, you're never going to be immune from DNFs. It's just going to happen. And when it does happen, maybe you can apply the chip. Um, which chip is it? We can click on apply here. And the no negative chip. Although, so no negative points are applied for the entire race week. Oh, so you, I think you have to. Do you have to do this before the deadline then? So you have to kind of guess where there might be dnfs is that right am i reading this right anyone in the chat help me out work this out so limitless wildcard final fix obviously none of these are apply at the moment they're grayed out because it's the first race of the season we can do what we want anyway um yeah autopilot top scoring drive will automatically get that override in the manual selection again i guess we have to just kind of guess where's best to use that then the no negative i would have thought was going to be a retrospective thing I, I, if that's the case, and if we have to choose this before, we'll just put it on the sprint race. I think Baku. I think Baku is the first sprint race. Is that right? Um, can anyone confirm that? Is Baku the first sprint race? Uh, Baku is probably quite a dangerous track. It's quite a tight, windy bit. Um, I can, you know, through the castle section, every time I go through there, or not me personally, but every time I see drivers go through there, I feel like something's going to happen. Um, yeah, so if maybe just you know, the no negative on a sprint race like Baku could be a good time to use it if we can't use it retrospectively. Um, and the, the booster as well. Again, I'll be using that on a sprint race for sure. Uh, it's probably going to be on Max Verstappen, provided, you know, it obviously depends how the first few races go, but I'll wait for a sprint race like Austria, probably. Austria seems like a good place to do the extra DRS. Um, autopilot, when's the best time for that? Just whenever you, I guess, whenever it's a dangerous a dangerous race. So maybe Jeddah. Jeddah actually could be a good one because. Uh, the last couple of races around Jeddah, particularly that first season around Jeddah, was a bit lethal around there. Not lethal, thankfully, but you know what I mean. Um, quite dangerous, a tight tight track. The walls are really close in, high risk of DNF. So maybe using the autopilot chip on that uh, could be useful. Again, maybe you want to use a no negative for that, but autopilot could be good. You know, if something happens to Max Verstappen in Jeddah, then you just automatically go down to the next the next guy. So, yeah, interesting, interesting chips. Um, let's see what's going on in the chat again. Uh... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alonso costing points. Um okay, thoughts on De Vries. I kind of already touched on De Vries a bit. I think at five million, he's fine. I'm not convinced that Alpha Tori. I would like to see some more of them in the practice sessions before I decide on that. I think the budget the budget guys are kind of much of a muchness and you're not gonna get much out of them. Um I think Guan Yu Zhou could be the best of the sub five million. Um yeah, I'm not sure. How much money have I got left in 
Oh, I've still got a million, so I could I could go for debris still. Um, if I, why if I if I've deselected a driver, why doesn't it automatically put me on the driver page? Come on, guys, you just released the game, make it easy for us. <laughs> so yeah, I could uh, I could get rid of Hulkenberg and go to debris, which is what I had initially before Michael drew my attention to Hulkenberg. But yeah, and I, I think Nick debris could be a good shout. Um, <clears throat> Leclerc or Perez, who's who's more worth their price? Uh, let's have a quick look at the prices again. So the clerk is 21.2. Sergio Perez is 18. Um, I think Perez is underpriced, if anything. I think Perez is definitely underpriced. Why is Perez cost less than Russell, for example? But just why? He came second in, in the Drivers' Championship last year. Red Bull looks super strong. Why is Sergio Perez 18 million? Well, that could be another reason to <clears throat> not have Ferrari as a second constructor. Go for someone like Aston Martin. Um, and then enables you to get like Sergio Perez because he's so underpriced, and therefore you might, you know, if he does well in Bahrain, which I anticipate him to do so, <clears throat> we could look at building our budget just from the get go. Um, so yeah, that's that's a good, that's a reasonable shout. I'm asking that question about Leclerc and Perez, I think that's uh, certainly an interesting one. That um, you know, we what we got to think, we got to think about the budget because obviously if we grow our budget in this new new format of the game where the the change happens like the day after the um the race <clears throat> building an early budget can really jump jump you ahead of the the masses because i anticipate there's probably going to be at least a couple of million teams uh, in the global league and if we can get a little head start on those guys by getting a bit of the budget boost and improving the likes of someone like just for example hulkenberg up to an albon or something which is probably an upgrade in my eyes um that could definitely definitely um be a good thing at the start of the season so yeah i think perez let's let's look at who is underpriced and who's overpriced should we go through it i think for Stappen, i think he's i think he's underpriced i think he's slightly underpriced i think i would have put him closer towards the 30 million in fact i probably would have put him at about 30 million like make it a dip more difficult choice it's too easy at 26.9 million to come in and just be like yeah max Verstappen, drs boost and then we'll worry about the rest of the team like after i think he's underpriced i think it's uh poor <laughs> poor from the game i think lewis hamilton is overpriced i think mercedes not doing great in testing i think they'll come good and i think they'll stick some upgrades on the car and they will be stronger uh but initial pricing i think lewis hamilton is overpriced by probably a good couple of million um the clerk at 21.2 could be very underpriced i think actually considering verstappen is like five over five million more than than charles the clerk I think I think Charles Leclerc could be another one along along the same lines as Perez that could jump up in price. You know, Charles Leclerc won the race here in Bahrain last season, so he could be a good shout. You know, with that straight line speed of the Ferrari, maybe we'll see Leclerc take a take down a victory um, in in the first race, and then his price suddenly soars. And if you don't have him in your team, suddenly you're like, oh. Um, if he doesn't do well, I can't see his price dropping dramatically. I think he's slightly underpriced. I would say so. That's uh, something to bear in mind. George Russell. I think it's fairly, fairly fair, I'd say. I think I'd, I'd like to see Lewis Hamilton a bit closer to George Russell. I think last season showed that George and Lewis are pretty evenly matched, I would say. Um, and to see them like 5 million difference is, again, I don't know who's behind these prices. Um, I don't know if we've got, a, have we got someone to blame yet. Uh, can we just blame play on again? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But um, yeah, I think George Russell is about right. And I think Lewis Hamilton is definitely overpriced. Sergio Perez, hugely underpriced. You know, 18 million. What what a joke that is! That's mockery, absolute mockery. I think I think Perez will definitely climb in price. I anticipate him to do well at the start of the season. Uh, Carlos signs 17.2 million. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's probably about right considering he's like. I think I'd rate the clerk as a better driver, not by much, but I think the clerk is a bit of a better driver than signs. So if I was going to pick a Ferrari driver. You know, saving about four million with Carlos Sainz. I think Carlos Sainz is probably just about right. If they brought him down to like sixteen million, maybe it'd be a lot more tempting. I think we'd see him in a lot more teams. But as it is, I don't think he's going to get into a lot of teams. Lando Norris, I think, would have been more or less right if McLaren didn't look so awful in the testing. So I think he's currently overpriced, especially when you bear in mind Fernando Alonso, eight point three million. I think Fernando Alonso, given how testing's gone, <clears throat> I would have priced Alonso. Where would I put him? Probably somewhere between 12 and 14 million. Is that a bit much? Maybe 12, 12 or 13 million? Like at, at least 10 million. At least 10 million. I think he's just too cheap. Ocon at 9.4, I think is probably about right. I think Alpines will surprise a few people. And I think they'll be fine this season. I think both Ocon, I think I think Gasly is, is potentially underpriced. I think Gasly is another one. 
that could be really good pick for the beginning of the season if you're just looking at building budget if you, you know maybe maybe that's important actually maybe we need to sacrifice a couple of points and maybe just build a team that we anticipate will help us build a budget for the first couple of races and Gasly at 8.1 million I think that could definitely I think it could be a, a good a good little boost there uh, Bottas at 7.8 I think that's fine I think I think everyone down here like 7.5 and below is pretty fairly priced I would say Stroll yeah again in the Aston Martin pretty good price considering how good Aston Martin are looking Oscar Piastri at 7 million Again, McLaren just don't look good, so I think that's fine. And quite a, quite a difference to him and, and Norris. I think Norris... Um, <clears throat> I think if McLaren look good, there's no real point in getting Norris over Piastri, as long as Piastri isn't awful, which I don't anticipate him to be. The fact that there's no teammate points means that the likes of picking Lando Norris over the likes of Piastri is <clears throat> just not as appealing as they were last season. Um, who else we got down here? Yeah, Magnussen, maybe fractionally overpriced considering the rest of the budgets. Uh, Albon 5.5 I think is really good value and I'm pretty certain he's going to be in my team to start the things off. Um, Nick De Vries is yeah kind of I think I think Guan Yu Zhou should be a bit more expensive 4.9 million. Um, and yeah that pretty much sums it up I think everyone else down here is kind of fine I think I'm quite happy with those prices. So overall not overly pleased with the pricing structures particularly as they wait until after testing I think that's a bit rubbish that they've made it a bit made it a bit dodgy. Um, a quick, quick look at the chat then we'll go through the um, the constructors uh, how is sergeant looking oh, it looks okay i think the williams in, in general kind of looked okay it looks definitely closer to the midfield than it did from last season so i think sergeant if you need to go down to someone that costs just four million i think sergeant is fine um <clears throat> it all depends on the rest of your team and again sergeant is kind of a safe bet you're not going to lose value in him um last season the minimum that drivers could get to was four million i don't know if that's there's still a minimum or if people can still fall to like two or one million but i think you know sergeant could be a good shout it could be another um driver that helps you grow your budget if he has a reasonable race then you know get a couple of overtakes maybe um and then he could be a really good budget just four million so yeah it could be interesting um uh, bought some piastri underpriced as well piastri i think it's kind of okay at seven million i think he's kind of fine uh, again i don't think mclaren look good they've had a lot of issues reliability issues and as well as just a lack of downforce on the car I just don't think they look particularly great so I'm not going to touch the McLarens at least at the beginning of the season um, lots of negativity coming out of that camp frustration is clear so yeah I'm not I'm not going to go near the <laughs> it's funny a couple of weeks ago I was like Lando Norris all over Lando Norris he's going to be my team he's going to be the turbo driver and then we get the new pricing structure and the new um yeah, the new rules and everything, and the fact that the McLaren just don't look good, and I'm just not even going to touch Lando Norris, I'm afraid. So, um, are you playing FPL? Yeah, I do play FPL. I'm kind of, I don't know what my rank is at the moment. I think I'm around 100, 100 and something thousand. Can have a quick look if you want. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, uh, two seasons ago, I finished 1,079. That was my best ever result. Two points off the top 10k. Um, yeah, my current rank is 150k in FPL, in case you're interested. So it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Uh, thoughts on history? Yeah, so that's it. I think the chat has dried up over there. So I'm just quickly going to go through the constructors and whether I think they're overpriced or underpriced. I think I'll probably wrap it up then. And like I said, I'll be doing a couple of videos uh, through the week. So And then obviously the deadline stream as well. So let's quickly go through the constructors. And then if anyone's got any final questions, I'll go through that. And then we'll, we'll call it a day, I think um so yeah red bull i think definitely underpriced i think they should have been much dearer like when you consider that max verstappen is 26.9 million and then you can get red bull when the constructors are clearly favored with the point scoring system of this game for like just fractionally more money was it 0.3 it's literally 0.3 of a million you can get red bull um i think they're hugely underpriced they should have priced them a lot more and made it a difficult decision they should have made it difficult for us to put them in our team Instead, they've made it dead easy. In they go. Don't have to think about it. Red Bull in, Max Verstappen in. They should have been priced at least like 35 million, I think. Uh, give us a decision. Give us a decision. I'm not happy with the price of the Red Bull, to be honest. Um, Mercedes at 25 million. I would say the, well, I'd say everyone here is probably underpriced, to be honest. But given the price structure that we have, I'll go for it in that respect. Um, Mercedes are uh, probably overpriced at the moment. I'd probably put them down at where Ferrari are and put Ferrari where Mercedes are. Um, yeah, I think Ferrari clearly look stronger. 
if they've ironed out those reliability woes and you know you've got Fred Vasier at the, the helm now instead of Bonotto I think Fred looks like a, a solid chap that will get Ferrari running like a well old machine so yeah I think Ferrari underpriced Mercedes overpriced and then we got a massive drop from Ferrari at 22 all the way down to Alpine at 10 like less than half of that um, Alpine at 10 million they're a bit of an unknown at the moment I do think they would be all right but 10 million if you're going to spend if you're going to cut down from the one of the premium constructors the only other option i'd probably really look at is aston martin who at 6.7 million like again if we're looking at in terms of building our budget 6.7 million we could see aston martin skyrocket if they if if alonso does well if drogovic slash stroll does well in the first like race then i think we could see aston martin really skyrocket so again um obviously we want points and the whole point of fantasy game is gathering points we got to think about the long-term picture as well and building a budget from the get-go is definitely a strategy and something i'll be thinking about and looking at the pros and cons of do i pick the team which i think is optimal in terms of scoring points for the first race or do i tweak it slightly and try and get a couple of those picks where i think are going to build the budget in the long run and therefore get more points further down the line. And I think a way to do that second uh, method of playing the game, Aston Martin at 6.7 million could be a fantastic way of building building that budget. Um, I think, yeah, again, everyone else down here is kind of very similarly priced, and I think that's all fair. I think Williams has... I think Alfa Romeo actually also kind of surprised me that they're that cheap. I think Alfa Romeo have looked pretty solid um, through the testing, so I think Alfa Romeo could be underpriced as well. Um, but yeah... All in all, I think that pretty much covers my thoughts on the pricing. Um, again, I've already touched on the rules. I think the rules changes a bit hit and miss, um, but they are what they are, and we've got to play with them, and we'll do our best. <laughs> um, yeah, has anyone got any final questions um, to ask me about the, the game or anything else that might be on your mind? Um, if you're interested, like I said, I've got my um, my spreadsheet as well, which I... I did have a, but I've a couple of them. Yeah, if people want access to the spreadsheet, it's, it's available to all members. It's only one ninety nine a month if you want to become a member and you have access to the spreadsheet, which now I now need to do a massive update on because of all the different changes of the, the rules and everything. But yeah, um, if you want access to the spreadsheet, by all means, one ninety nine a month if you want to come join the party. Um, and yeah, uh, that pretty much sums up. I'll just check the chat for the last couple of minutes and if there's nothing else, then I think we'll we'll call it. Um, just in your team, and I have Russell instead of Perez. I think Russell's dearer than Perez, isn't he? Yeah, like <clears throat> if you've gone Russell over Perez, maybe you're looking at the you know the reliability of that Mercedes. But I think I think Perez at 18 million is hugely underpriced. And if you've got the money to get one of Russell or Perez in your team structure, then I think I think Perez just seems like a great option. But yeah, I can see the appeal of George Russell. I think he's still a good shout. But I think Perez is really underpriced, 18 million. I think his price will skyrocket. Um, so yeah, it could be an interesting one. Uh, I don't see save button. Am I missing something? I don't want to lock in too soon. Um, I mean, I, my team is my team is safe. What are you talking about? I don't see a save button. Um, okay. Uh, I think I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what you mean, Michael. But uh, Gilliam, can you show your picks with Mercedes as constructor? Sure. I can. Let's let's, let's <clears throat> if we reset everything. Let's have a think about what we want. I mean, if we go Mercedes as constructor, I mean, I personally am not going to go this way. I think Ferrari are just the better option. They're three million cheaper and they look stronger. So if I was going to go for this, then I would pick Ferrari. But by all means, if you want to see what I would be looking at for Mercedes, again, I, I don't think it's negotiable to remove Red Bull. So I'd have them. And due to the pricing of being Max Verstappen kind of underpriced, I think, again, I would have Max Verstappen. So that would leave me with 21 million. Can I squeeze in Fernando Alonso? And just, I'm not sure I can squeeze in all these budgets. I think I'm going to have to go down as low as Sergeant potentially. No, I'm not going to be able to afford it, am I? Ooh, see, this is the trouble with Mercedes. I think they're overpriced. And for this exact reason that I can't get a team which involves the, the key members, um, it, which is Alonso and Verstappen, we could, we could look at, we could, we could do some blasphemy here and not include Max Verstappen in this build. We could get for Perez, who is at a big cut price, and that enables us to get someone else um, in at that sort of price. Not sure who you'd want though. We've got 12 million there. Um, if we got rid of Sergeant, then potentially we could go for Gasly if we want to build a budget. And like Bottas, I'm not sure about the double Alfa Romeo though. That's probably not ideal. But then you can't really afford much else down there. 
like album but then you've got three million just sitting around in the bank not being used yeah i i, I don't really like mercedes as a constructor to be honest um the freeze over joe um personally i'm leaning more towards guan yu joe i think he could be a really good shout this season i think he's really good price at 4.9 million i think he's gonna be he's quite cheap and should be able to build build the budget based off that um let's have a look at if i look at a team let's cancel that let's have a look at a team where it's budget building actually can i wait can i create a new team let's do it let's create a brand new team and who do i think are underpriced and can build the budget let's have a look at who we're going to build the budget or i think ferrari will go up and i think <clears throat> aston martin going to go up i think perez is definitely underpriced so we'll put him in there um verstappen's only owned by 59 percent. what are people doing don't know uh who else is gonna go up? i think carlos Sainz could go up in price i think fernando alonso is obviously going to go up in price i think guan yu joe is another one that's going to potentially go up in price i've still got 22 million oh my god um so in that case i could probably get like go all in on ferrari and you know if i think that they're underpriced which they are, i think leclerc's probably about right price um but i think yeah this is a team i could definitely build uh, it doesn't involve Max Verstappen though, and it's weak with the constructors. I think Red Bull are kind of a little bit non-negotiable for me personally. But if I want to build a second team just to build budget, then a team like this might might be the way to go. Um, <clears throat> Red Bull, Ferrari, and then Leclerc, Alonso. <clears throat> Better options for the free lower price options. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So you're telling me Red Bull and Ferrari. Uh, Leclerc Alonso. So instead of you're saying instead of Max Verstappen, I would assume, Glenn. Am I right in thinking? So if we go Leclerc and Alonso, that gives us 21 million for the budget dudes. Yeah, I can sort of see where you're coming from. So that might enable us to take a bit of a punt on Pierre Gasly. Um, who else are we going to get? Probably Nick De Vries, and then we're left with seven million odd. You could could go for like Piastri. Don't really want to get Lance Stroll because it's likely to be Drogovic in the first game. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure not having Verstappen is worth it. <clears throat> I feel like Verstappen's just underpriced, and I'm not sure it's worth it. But oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, because like, is Pierre Gasly a huge upgrade on the likes of Guan Yu Zhou? Probably not. So you could just like go back to original Max Verstappen. Why is he grayed out? Because I don't have enough money. Max Verstappen. And instead of, like, if you go Leclerc over Max Verstappen, all you're getting, basically, you can still get Guan Yu Zhou. Oh, Guan Yu Zhou's there. You can kind of get Nick De Vries. And, and if you went with, um, yeah, it's basically, basically, if you go Leclerc over Verstappen, you're kind of looking at Nick De Vries versus Pierre Gasly. It's kind of a much for whatever, much for muchness. <laughs> um, I like this team. I like this team. All uh, right, last couple of questions, and I think I'm going to call call it a day. Uh, what do you think about Alpine this year? Alpine, I've, I have touched on them already. I'm not sure if you just joined the stream, but I think Alpine will be fine. I think they've been <clears throat> underwhelming a little bit in testing, um, but there is some general positive vibes I've seen from interviews with Gasly, Gasly and um, Ocon, I think, and uh, team principal Otmar, Otmar, whatever his name is. Um, yeah, there's been some positive vibes. Um, Gasly seems quite comfortable and settled in his new team. Uh, the Alpine last season did have a lot of reliability issues, which is a little bit of a concern. Um, <clears throat> but overall, I think Alpine, and they're, they're going to be bringing in an upgrade. From my understanding, it's quite a, a big upgrade, considering it's like, you know, the season's literally just started and they're already upgrading the car. So I think Alpine definitely could be an option. Um, not for me as a constructor. Um, and I think if I was going to pick one of the drivers... I'd probably save myself like one 1.3 million and pick Gasly over Ocon. That said, Ocon, you know, he's been in the team already. He's kind of knows the car already well from from the last season, whereas Gasly's going to kind of learn it. Um, so Ocon could be a good shout. Could be kind of that steady steady ship that you want in the midfield. Um, but yeah, overall Alpine, yeah, I think they'll be all right. I think they'll be all right. And they could be a little bit of a dark horse, but I kind of want to see where they're at for the first race or two, probably before I pick any of them as an option. Um your cost the cost cap was over 100 million no i did not notice that to be honest did not notice that i've not even uh, uh, is, what, what do you mean is that and i think that still comes to 100 million i'm not i'm not sure what you mean exactly vepa but well, let's have a look at the poll as well i forgot about that poll ages ago in the poll <laughs> so that was oh where's the oh there we go aston Martin ahead of mercedes so yeah 
most people uh, 117 votes most people were saying that mercedes will still be ahead but it's pretty close the fact that that answer to that poll is pretty close kind of shows that um Oh, I've also made a massive spend mistake. I can't even spell Aston, but Aton. <laughs> I only just noticed that like ages after putting it up. Never mind. Um, yeah, I think the fact that it's that close just goes to show how improved Aston Martin are and how what lack of confidence that people have in Mercedes and the fact that I think, yeah, I think um, Aston Martin and particularly Fernando Alonso are just underpriced. Uh, when did the prices change yep thank you michael for answering that um i believe it's gonna be monday i'm not sure if it states explicitly a time does it say a time don't know don't know doesn't say does it there's not a lot of information here compared to last season picking the team scores more is it under more countries no nope. scores mm. yeah it doesn't seem to say exactly doesn't seem to say exactly when the prices will change. Hopefully we'll get some sort of indication. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, if you haven't already, there is a link further up in the chat uh, for joining the league. And I'll try and work out if I can get hold of the um, the actual code for people to join the league. More, more the merrier. There's now 19,000 people already in the global league. So I expect that to soar up, to, up towards around the 2 million and maybe beyond mark. As fantasy seems to be getting more and more popular nowadays but yeah we'll see how that goes um but yeah i think just seeing get a team of max lewis de vries albon Leclerc, aston alpine yeah but i'm not sure about that team tom beck because of the constructors i think aston and alpine this is my personal opinion i just think red bull a base of red bull and probably ferrari or maybe red bull and aston martin are, are the way to go but it's definitely a good a good team of drivers that you've got like the clerk and max and lewis like they're solid, reliable, quick drivers. So yeah, I kind of like that. But for me personally, I think I'm going to lean towards the, the heavier constructors. Um, but yeah, I think, unless anyone's got any last minute questions, I think I'm going to wrap it up then. Um, yeah, thank you very much for joining everyone. Um, stay tuned for more videos through the week and also the deadline stream next week. So yeah, I think we'll call it a day. Thank you very much for watching. Is it worth playing with only four drives? You, you can't. <laughs> Not sure what you mean by that. Um, do, 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 do. So I'm just watching the chat. I know everyone's probably signing off now, but does the cost apply to your team even if you pick it before the prices would change? Prices would change. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. I forgot that constructors are weighted on the points. Yeah, yeah. So looking looking through the um, the point scoring system, I think constructors are. Um, favored for sure i mean i'm going to read through the the rules like with a fine tooth comb to make sure i haven't missed anything but from my initial reaction is that constructors are like big beefy constructors are the way to go so i think ferrari red bull are probably the way to go but we'll see we'll see um so yeah, anyway i'm going to wrap it up guys thank you very much for joining god knows how long this has gone on for how long have i been chatting for over an hour so yeah um i think that's gonna like i say i'm gonna put in a couple of videos during the week and i'm also going to do a, a deadline stream on saturday if you want to come join that that'll be good fun um i'm available on obviously in the comments section of all my videos and also on twitter at pop and f1 if you want to send me messages ask me stuff then i'll do my best to reply i'm sure it'll be nice to have some interaction with you guys uh, but in the meantime everyone have a great week it's race week so yeah get those teams locked in in five days time um yeah give me your thoughts on your you know what you think will be the best team going forward do you agree that my team i've currently got up here is potentially a way to go this is just my first thoughts i will look more into it and you know go through the pros and cons of different builds um but yeah that's it for me thank you very much for joining the stream i've had great fun as always i think i'm gonna lose my voice if i continue much further please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and it's helped you helped you out a little bit it's been really fun and exciting chatting with you guys as always um yep yeah, checking flag is out thank you keith thank you michael and I'll catch you again, yeah, in a couple of days' time probably for the next video. So, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.